You know why this is a gospel issue? It's real simple. We proclaim Jesus as the Savior from sin. Therefore, we have to be able to define what sin is. If you can't define what sin is, you don't need a Savior from sin. And if we can have the clarity of Leviticus 18 and 20, and Genesis 18 and 19, and Romans chapter 1, and 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and 1 Timothy chapter 1, if we can have that level of clarity and then say, well, but we're not really sure. You know, maybe that was just if it was done over there. If we cannot have clarity on the definition of marriage itself, when Jesus said it was a first principle to understand this, then how can we proclaim a Savior from a sin we can't even describe to you? We can't even identify it. That's why it's a gospel issue, because without this, you can't define the gospel. You end up with the gospel of liberalism, which is you feel good about you, and whatever you do, it's all about you. And the gospel of Scripture is all about God and what he's doing in redeeming a people unto himself. That's the difference. But then Ephesians continues and says, this is a profound mystery, but I am talking about Christ and the church. So here, we see marriage connected to the union between Christ and the church. And that's the model that we should be aspiring to in our relationships, a model that is focused on self-giving covenant. Yes, same-sex relationships we didn't, they were not on the radar screen in a way that would have fit that framework in ancient societies or really until pretty recently because of how repressive our society has been and how not understanding and how intolerant our society has been of people who are different. But we know better today and we know we can affirm and uphold these core principles in the Bible about marriage while also including those who are sexual and gender minorities in that. It's not about burning it down. It's about being consistent in offering that opportunity, not just for, because it's not just an opportunity for satisfaction, although hopefully it is, it's also an opportunity for sanctification. And did you notice how we did the same thing? None of this has anything to do with two loving people in a monogamous relationship. Notice how you're assuming your conclusion, reading it in without having given anything from the text of Scripture that even begins to substantiate the existence of what you are now asserting.